It's time for light that darkness can't defeat. It's time to escape from the shadow of death and into abundant life. For the people living in darkness have seen a great light, and those living in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Welcome to the Great Lights Program with David Oyedipo Jr. Get set to arise and shine because your light has come. Walking by faith. And our anchor scripture is 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7 for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yesterday we discovered that the believer is, this, is designed to overcome the world. 1 John 5 4 for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith so you are designed to overcome the world the circumstances of the world the resistances of the world whatever it is that fights the world you are designed to overcome it but the bible says that the only way to do that is through faith praise the lord i said praise the lord we also discovered that god has put inside every one child of god rich deposits rich deposits do you know that you are the most prized possession of heaven? The Bible, if you look at Ephesians chapter 1, and we read it from verse 17, you would see the Bible explain this to us. It said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling and what riches what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints so the saints are god's inheritance god's wealth is in you god's treasure is in you you are god's prized possession you are not a pauper you are here to prosper because god has put inside you all that he has are you listening to what i'm saying he said that the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints not for the saints but in them so inside you is god's richest deposit are you listening to what i'm saying it means for example if 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 god will put his wealth in a bank the bank of god is the saint so every treasure of God is loaded inside the saint. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Which means that if you are born again, there is a deposit inside of you that is waiting for full expression. And we must begin to understand this and walk with this consciousness. And I pray that as we go through this seminar, God will introduce you to you. Yeah, yeah. And give you the grace to walk in the reality of who you really are. Yeah. You believe it, shout aloud, Amen. Yeah. And we saw last night that in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 12, how the Bible said to us there that we see now through a glass darkly, but then face to face. And now we know in part, but then he said we shall know even as we are known. So there are, there are portions of who you are many times that are hidden from you. And that is why it takes a, a conscious effort to discover who you are and express the reality of your potential on the earth and we said that this can only take place by faith however faith is not blind faith is a product of spiritual facts all right so when we talk about walking by faith and not by sight it doesn't mean that faith does not see but it only means that faith sees differently so while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen we are still looking but what we are looking at is unseen all right so we heard um, in the first teaching how pastor always said he was looking at jesus so he was not blind looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith so faith is not blind it's only that the sight of faith is different from the sight of eyes are you listening to what i'm saying so you don't believe anything that is not seen and you get what i'm saying yeah. there is the eye of the spirit that must see something from god's word that must be believed right. so faith is not just i believe it is i believe something that god has said yeah. are you listening to what i'm saying yeah. so if we say that the potential of the believer is so great 
then we must actually see what that potential is to become it. Until you see it from his word, you are not permitted to become it. What I'm trying to show you tonight is that faith has a sight that is different from the eyes. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It has a sight that is different from the eyes. The eyes look naturally, but faith looks spiritually. And where faith catches its picture from is from the word of God. That is why every time, like we heard, you live by natural sight, you have registered to sink. Because all that it means is that you are set up for failure. Everything, the Bible says, will be shaken in the earth. He said there comes a time where even the heavens will shake. He said, but we haven't received a kingdom that cannot be shaken or cannot be moved. So, you see, the, the, the world of the spirit into which you are called and into which you are born is a world that works on different parameters than what the physical world operates on. And once your focus changes from the spiritual to the physical, then you are set up for failure eventually. But if your focus remains on the spiritual, on what God has said, then you are set up for success regardless of the situations of life. So I'd like you to understand that it's important for us to uncover from God's word what is your real potential. If, if according to scriptures, um, God's best is in you, then what does God describe about you? You see, every gadget comes with, with, with um, a manual that tells you the capacity of that gadget. God's word is the manual that tells you your capacity as his own creation. So we want to look tonight at one very, one very fundamental thing uh, that we see about your potential and then we'll, we'll, we'll move further in this teaching. John chapter 3 verse 8. He said, Jesus was here speaking. Many of us will know this story. Nicodemus came to Jesus and asked Jesus and told Jesus, well, you see, we have discussed your matter and from our conclusion, there is no way that any man can do the things that you are doing except God is with him. All right? So there's no, we agree. It's just that we don't say it outside. Yes. And you notice the Bible says he came by night. Yes. Uh -huh. So he came by night to tell him, we, we know that it is, we know you are a teacher that comes from God. There's no issue about that. We know that no man can do these things except God is with him. We, we know that. All right? But it's just that we, we find it difficult to agree with you as a person. Do you know that it is possible for people to agree with your proofs but not agree with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's possible to be hated, but to be envied. Yeah. I've seen it, so I, I, I know a lot of people that hate me. <laughs> but they like my results. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But hear what Jesus explains to him. We, we, we know that that's where Jesus explained what it means to be men, to be born again and all of that. But in verse 8 in particular, he said the wind blows where it wants to go. You hear the sound, but you don't know where it's going to or where it's coming from. So is everyone that is born wow. of the Spirit. Yes. Now, let me say this to you to help you. You see, wind is one of the most unstoppable forces on the earth. If you have water, if you have fire, you can douse it with water. If you have water, you can dam it with concrete. But you can't control wind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't. There's nothing you can. You can only ask the wind to assist you. So, for example, a person in a boat uses a, the wind to move him forward. But you don't tell the wind where to go. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Somebody who wants to generate electricity puts a wind turbine and allows the wind to assist him. But you don't tell the wind where to go. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, I lived um, for a number of years. In, in, in the state of Oklahoma in America and they call that area Tornado Alley. 
Because every year, somewhere between about March or so and August, you had tornadoes. Now, if you are familiar with a tornado, a tornado, you, there is no defense against it. It's only to get away from its path. All right? It's a circular wind motion. And a tornado, or a tornado goes in a direction, the house it meets is in trouble. <laughs> the car it meets is in trouble. Whatever it meets on its path cannot stand it as a barrier. But you see, the, 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 the interesting thing about wind is that wind does not know barriers. You can't hold it and stop it. You know what Jesus is saying? So is everyone that is born Amen. of the Spirit. Are you listening to me? You know what it means? What stops them can stop you. Yes. What kills them can kill you. Amen. What destroys them can destroy you. Amen. Because wherever the wind is determined to go, the wind goes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the same way, by potential, you are not designed to be limited. Amen. But here, what the Bible said, he said, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. So if you are limited, it is not because you don't have capacity, it's because you don't have faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So it is the absence of faith that is the barrier of the believer. The absence of faith is the real barrier of the believer, not the barrier itself. The barriers you face or the limitations that you face are not your real barriers. The real barrier for a believer is the absence of faith. What you don't believe is what you cannot see. It's not what you cannot receive. You can receive it, but because you don't believe it, you cannot see it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, You see, that is why your, your potential can be frustrated where faith is absent. Your potential, what you are designed to be, how far you are designed to go, can be frustrated where faith is absent. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. All things are possible to him that believeth. How many things? All things. All things are possible to him that believes. All things. All things. The reason why some things look impossible is because we don't believe them. It's because we don't believe them. All things are possible. It is possible not to borrow one dime or one penny. It's possible. The problem is we don't believe it. See, you see, the country is a credit system. I don't owe one pound to any mortal man, living or dead. I don't owe one pound. My name is not in any bank. To register for collection of anything. <laughs> I don't have one credit card. I'm in the same country with you. <laughs> and I'm not a member harasser. I don't harass members of the church. I've not begged a mortal man. Since God called me into ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I don't prosper by being a beggar. I prosper because of what I believe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When I was called to ministry, I knew they could, I could be sent to any part of the world. And I made a statement. I said, there is no country under heaven that can make me poor. Inflation is not the challenge. No. Wealth is not in the pocket. It's inside me. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Do you not hear what Paul said? He said, <laughs> Paul said something. He said that, um, um, that, um, that I pray that God will, will bless you according to his riches in glory. So bank account is not with Barclays. It's in glory. The riches in glory. So all I need to do is just operate with a heavenly mindset and have my heavenly transaction going. And no matter what the, you know, the challenges on the earth may be, 
I can walk above it. Why? Because that is what I believe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Since I've been in ministry, I've never been on a hospital bed. I've gone to my GP twice. Register with the first GP. And then when I moved to register with the second one. If you see me in the hospital, it's to pray for somebody. You know why? That's what I believe. You see, your capacity is not the reason for where you are. Your faith is the reason for where you are. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where you will be tomorrow is not determined by whether God is going to change tomorrow. Where you will be tomorrow is determined by where your faith will be tomorrow. So faith is what determines the degree of expression that your potential enjoys. Are you listening to me? Faith is what determines it. The degree of expression that your potential enjoys. That is why I don't know if there is any other better way you can be helped towards 2015 than to be assisted to build your faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I don't know if there is any better way. Because it's important for you to note that your experience will never change until you change. It is your transformation that determines the change of your experience. If your faith is at 2014 level, then you bring 2015 down to 2014 level. But if your faith can increase beyond the 2014 level, then your manifestation must match your faith. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you understand that now? So you are not designed to be limited. There is no barrier. There is no limit to how far you can go. There is nothing stopping you from breaking records. All that determines where you will be is your faith. Are you listening to me? All that determines where you will be as a believer is your faith. It's your faith. It's your faith. The challenge is not the medical report. The challenge is your faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It is not that faith people don't have confrontations, but it is that they win it. This is the victory. This is the victory. This is the victory. So it's not just the battle, but the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So it is not just... It's not about... we, We had a testimony yesterday. A man... They, they, had, um, they had a baby, and at, at, at 32 weeks of pregnancy, they told the, 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 the parents that this, this child is not viable. We need to terminate the pregnancy. He said, never. And he got certain scriptures together, including the fact that all the members of the body are already registered in heaven. So there is no, no challenge. And he came and told me. And he told me, well, this is what he saw in God's word. And I looked at him and said, be it unto you according to your faith. The child was dedicated yesterday. So the report is not the challenge. The report is not the challenge. The faith is. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The faith is the challenge. The faith is the challenge. So it's not what has been reported that is the issue. It is what is believed that is the issue. So the potency of your faith is the security of your destiny. The potency of your faith is the security of your destiny. The potency of your faith is the security of your destiny. The potency of your faith is the security of your destiny. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. 
So I'd like you to live here tonight with one fundamental understanding. I am not designed to be limited. If I am limited, it is not because of what I am facing, but because of the degree of my faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If something can stand before me and limit me, it is not because of that thing. But it's because of my faith. It's because of my faith. I heard a story concerning Sir Hillary Edmond. You know, he tried, he, he conquered uh, Mount Everest. Was it? All right. And he said the first time he went, of course, could not climb. Second time, could not succeed. And by the third time, he looked at the mountain. Um, somebody told the story. I've not read it myself, but it bears, <laughs> it's good for a faith teaching. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and he said, he looked at the mountain and said, well, since the last time I came here, you have not grown. You are the same size. But I have grown. I have gotten better. I am more skilled. And I will conquer you. Mountains don't grow. But faith can grow. Are you listening to what I am saying? You know what that simply means? What beat you yesterday can be beaten today. If you grow your faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If you grow your faith. So stop celebrating your problems. And start maturing your faith. As your faith grows, your problems are cheaply conquered. I pray for you today that whatever it is that conquered you, in 2014 the first quarter of 2015 it is already defeated on every side no matter how long it has been the first quarter of 2015 it is already defeated in your life you see life is very cheap if you understand how to live it is very very cheap if you know how to live life is very very cheap all you need to do is keep growing your faith and faith is in different compartments there are people who have faith for prosperity not for health and don't have, people have faith for health and not not for peace so you find somebody who is uh, is fighting at home because he does not believe in the potency of a peaceful family It's in compartment. It's, faith is not faith. I said yesterday that faith is in levels. I'm telling you today that faith is in compartments. Uh. Are you listening to what I'm saying? No. So it's not, just, it's not just how big your faith is, but where your faith is. Where? Where? What do you believe in? In what area? I told my wife when we were in courtship, I said we will not have one argument. It has not happened and cannot happen. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? It, that is, and there are people who look and say, you see, it's not possible. They are telling lies. No. You see, that it is not your experience does not mean it is not true. Yes. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. Huh? That it's not your experience does not mean that it's not true. And whether you wink your nose at it or not, it's my experience. <laughs> <laughs> are you get what I'm saying? So you are permitted to be angry, but that's what I believe. And because that's what I believe, that's what I am authorized to receive. You see, so your faith is not only in, in degrees, but in compartments. In compartments, in departments. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is so important. So it's all a matter of faith. The journey of life is a matter of faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So yesterday we looked at the fact that faith is about walking with God. Right? And we saw that in walking with God, it's about pleasing God. And it's also, you know, in pleasing God, we looked at all of the, the, the parameters of that. And we saw all the things that are required for us to walk with God 
appreciably. But this, this, this night, we're going to move to the other dimension. I said yesterday there were three things we're going to look at. Is that not true? One was walking with God. The second one was walking for God. And the third was destroying the works of the devil. So tonight, we're going to look at walking for God. Faith is not only in walking with God, but also walking for God. Second Corinthians 5, 7, remember? He said, we walk by faith and not by sight. If we are walking by faith, we said we'll be walking with God. But if you are walking with God, you will also be walking for God. Walking for God. And we saw the story of Enoch in Hebrews 11 and verse 5. We saw that in Hebrews 11, 5 and also verse 6. Enoch walked with God. Enoch was translated, I should not see death, and was, was not found but because he, God translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And then Genesis 5 and verse 24 said that that pleasing God was that he walked with God. All right, and without faith, it is impossible to do what to please God. So we have that concerning Enoch. His walk with God was was what was called faith. And also, we discovered that the walk with God also propels us to walking for God. You remember John chapter six, verse twenty-eight and twenty-nine. They asked Jesus, "What shall we do to walk the works of God?" He said, "This is the work of God that you believe on Him." Whom he has sent. So the work of God is the work of faith. If you are walking in faith, you'll be walking for God. You'll be walking for God. In John chapter 9, verse 4, Jesus gave us his own testimony there. He said that I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day, for the night will come when no man can walk. Are you listening to me? Are you know um if you look at it, day is about light. Night is about darkness. So walking the works of God was walking in the light or walking in the world. And then the night was when there will be no light or no word. So every time you find an individual that is walking in faith, is naturally walking for God. It's going to be naturally walking for God. How do you walk for God with your faith? Let's look at that tonight. How do you walk for God with your faith? You see, faith is not a spiritual jackpot. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? That uh, you, you, you try to use to play lottery with God, to collect things from God. No, it's a partnership. It's an active partnership with God. It's an active partnership with God. And we looked at that yesterday. But how do you walk for God with your faith? Number one is your commitment to doing the word of God. Your commitment to doing what? To doing the word of God. James chapter 1 verse 5. Verse 25. James 1 25. The Bible said there. It says, but whoso looketh in the perfect law of liberty. He not being a forgetful hearer. But a doer of the work. That same man is blessed in his deed. So, you see, faith is not for lazy people. Faith house is for committed word workers. People who are ready to put the word of God to work. I love the saying that you, are, you have here in Kerry's. Um, <laughs> it, it is working for me and I'm working it. Because it won't work for you if you don't work it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not just about it's not just about it's not just about celebrating the things that God will do for you, but what you also will do from what God says. You see, let me say this to you to help you. Any insight or revelation that has not yet brought an instruction is incomplete. Until you see what to do, don't jump yet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because it is like celebrating the the the, the you know, when a person is applying for a job and you are celebrating the pay before the interview. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You say, can you imagine the pay pack? You haven't gone for interview yet. You haven't written your application yet. There is a process to the pay pack. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So don't dance about the pay pack until you discover the process to it. And the process to every promise is the instructions received from God. So every revelation is incomplete until it carries an instruction. Are 
listen to what I'm saying. Every revelation is incomplete until it carries an instruction. <laughs> so faith will always be tied to works or to action. He said, faith without works is dead. Actionless faith is dead. I said yesterday that you can have activity without productivity. But it's also true that you cannot have productivity without activity. Can you listen to what I'm saying? James 2, 18 and verse 26 also. Faith without works is dead. So you can't, you can't, your faith can't produce until it moves you into action. Hebrews 11 and verse 7, he said, by faith, Noah moved with fear. Not that, not that he, not that, you know, he, he heard the word of God alone. No, he moved at it. What was God's word to Noah? I want to deliver you, but there is a way. You must build an ark. So if you want to escape, build an ark. You want to die with them, be watching. And be dancing at the world. Why the rain will come? Can you listen to what I'm saying? So, you see, it's not just about what, what God has said he will do, but also what God has said you should do to see what he will do. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of us just celebrate what God, oh, God has said he will prosper me. For example, if, it's, if you want to prosper and you are not a giver, you have already registered to be a pauper. It's only a matter of time. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's as simple as that. Why? The Bible makes it clear. The liberal soul shall be made fat. He that waters shall also be watered unto. He said, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholds more than his meat, but yet he tended more to penury. To poverty. That's the meaning of that one. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And so to be stingy is to be stinky. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's, there, is no, there is no struggle. So it's not just about God has said he will prosper me. Wonderful. But there is a way for it. There is a way to prosper. God has said he will keep me in perfect health. Yes, but there are things you must not be saying. Perhaps you'll find yourself dying without knowing. There are people who have filled themselves from their mouth. Because every man is satisfied by the fruit of his lips. Even in jokes, you hear people say, Oh, the, I, the, not me, him, whoever it is. You know, I'm illustrating now. <laughs> so, <laughs> people say they are laughing themselves to death. So, uh, why won't death come eventually? If you are calling somebody and they are not answering, shouldn't you be surprised? You are calling death and it's not answering. You should be surprised because one day we answer. You have been calling him. Laughing to death means laughing on the way to meet him. And then you have been calling him and he has been on his way for the past how many years? One day he will come. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so you find out that you see there is always a pathway to every promise of God. And it is your obedience to that pathway that actually produces results. So you can't just say I believe without seeing what you do. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can't just say I believe without seeing what you do. Romans chapter 1 verse 5. He said there that, um, that you know, it, it, it said whom, whom God has given us a, a apostleship for obedience to the faith. Another, another version puts it as obedience which comes from faith. You can't be in faith and not be at work. Faith will always move you into certain actions. Can you listen to what I'm saying? Into certain specific actions. And it is your, your, your engagement in those actions that brings a product out of your faith. Your engagement in it. Is what brings a product out of your faith. You see, I'm trying to tell you tonight what it takes not to be frustrated as a believer. Right. I've seen many people who, who, you see, confession is powerful, but it has its assignment. I've seen many people who think that faith is only confession. And faith that is only confession will end in confusion. 
because confession is the natural projection of faith but that is not all it is one of the actions of faith you can't believe something and not come out of your mouth are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's one of the acts. It's not a substitute for the other ones. Whatever you believe in God's word has some instructions that are backing it on any subject. Wow. And it is your obedience to those instructions that back it that brings a product out of your faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. This is so important. This is so important. And when this is captured, it makes us enjoy the fullness of what God has in store for us. You will not be frustrated. I said you will not be frustrated. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be frustrated. In the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God gives man an instruction on how to live. Are you hearing me? Yeah. It gives man an instruction on how to live. All right, let me let me give you this for example. We talked about prosperity and we talked about giving. That is one of the actions that back prosperity. But do you know that poverty must come to a waster, even if it's a giver? Yeah. <laughs> the Bible makes it very clear. It says the waster is of a similar heritage with the sluggard and the sluggard is going to suffer want in the harvest so if you are a waster and you are a giver your wasting is cancelling your giving you see so there are laws of the spirit yes. that must be engaged so there are so don't just celebrate the promise discover the instructions and live by the instructions. That is what walking by faith really is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what walking by faith really is. I'm saying this because you must not end 2015 with the same prayer points you are praying now. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And that means your faith was not working. You see, sometimes Christians, we have a way of just being religious. You don't mind running after the same thing every time. But you see, if something failed last time, there is a reason why. And if you don't change your approach, then you are just begging it to fail again. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, look for the instructions from scriptures to engage. Walking by faith is walking with, for God and walking for God is walking his word. Walking his word. Walking his word. Taking God's word and walking it. Putting it to work. This is also from God's word. Work it is like Jesus said. Every Sunday you come here, every Friday you come here, you hear God's word, you are taught what have you done with the word that you have heard. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You know, there are people that like the end of a service. When the prophet says something. You understand? Pastor, finish the message. Get to the prophecy. <laughs> Are you going to say, get to the prophecy. God wants to say something to me. So what he says, all the instructions is not saying me. But the prophecy is saying to me. That one, Lord, now God is talking. Before God was not talking, but now God is talking directly to me. Now, the truth is this. Yes, he's talking to you, but he was also talking to you from the start of the message. And you know the truth? The prophecy is a product of the process of the message. If you don't process what has been said, what has been prophesied cannot be seen. Someone's knocking at the door Someone's knocking at the door Can you hear him knocking?
Can you hear him knocking? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is at the door. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner, but I know you died for me. And on the third day you rose again. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I pray for you, Father, I thank you today for these precious ones you have drawn into your kingdom. Let the grace that has brought them keep them in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, for each one of them, we decree today that the barriers against their life and destiny be broken in the name of Jesus. Grace to walk with you all the days of their lives. Release it upon them. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say a loud amen. If you have just received Christ as your Lord and Savior or were blessed through this broadcast, we would love to hear from you. For inquiries and testimonies, send an email to info at tglmedia.org. We also invite you to visit one of our Winners Chapel churches near you anywhere around the world. Until next time, keep walking in the great light.